Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're gonna have a good old long virus investigations type deal. Because today, it's not really about the virus we'll be investigating, but because of how massive it is. Now, if you haven't caught on, if you don't know, if you've been living in la-la land, if you've been just enjoying your time, what if I told you one of the spookiest cyber attacks actually happened, ladies and gentlemen? Some of the craziest parts of the internet were actually hacked to the point where we're talking legitimate nukes might have even been compromised. Now, if that sounds spicy as heck, let's talk about something called the solar winds hack, also known as sunburst or whatever you want to call it. Now, if you haven't heard about this, I'm going to come at you with it because this is something that I've been following for a few days now. I'm always interested with cybersecurity news, especially when it comes to malware, because it's not it's not common that I can share an absolute banger with you guys, okay? Something that just tizzles the entire world, okay? Right now, there is a feeling in my butt cheeks that I'm enjoying it. Now, let's get talking about what actually happened. Now, a, a company known as FireEye, which is a leading cybersecurity organization, pretty much disclosed a few days ago that they were actually hacked, all right, by what appeared to be a nation-state level hack. Now, if you don't know what a nation state level hack is, basically it's a hack per performed by uh, what is believed to be hackers that are operating uh, with the with the license from an actual nation. Now, normally this could mean it's either United States hacker, you know, basically like a U.S. like, uh, you know, military hacker that's actually committing real espionage against other massive countries in the world. Yes, it happens. It could be a Russian hacker that's working for the Russian government, a Chinese hacker, a North Korean hacker, an Iranian hacker, an Antarctican hacker. Hell, there could be nation state hackers for every nation because remember this isn't necessarily a conventional war that you're running this is literally talented hackers behind hardware that is actually quite accessible by everyone no there's not some crazy AI like quantum computer there could be but normally this is regular computers with absolutely talented security professionals working against other heavily talented security professionals it sounds really exciting but don't worry it's really just people typing in fucking terminal commands every single day but let's get to the wild, wacky fucking side of this situation. Now, we started off discussing, ooh, what a serious hack, what's crazy, but what actually got hacked? Now, to, to sort of ease you all right now, this isn't an attack that's necessarily going to happen on your computer, my computer, or any computer, because this isn't software that me and you are going to be typically fucking around with. The actual attack in this case was a product from a company called Solar Winds. They create products such as the Orion platform, which is basically an IT stack or an IT Swiss army knife. So basically, if you're a system administrator or somebody who does the back-end job of many websites and services around the world. So for instance, since you're watching you know, this video on YouTube, you YouTube pretty much has a robust IT team like many other tech companies or really any business out there. These are the people that handle the information security, all of the computer, all the computer grunt work behind the scenes. Okay, these are the talented men and women that slave over a keyboard with coffee in one hand and a keyboard in the other, and they try to keep the world safe as much as they can. The tool that they were fucking using was compromised. The Orion platform that handles things from network traffic analysis to virtualization managers. Yes, I had to sneak virtualization in somehow all the way to everything that they could do this whole platform Basically was attacked in what we call a supply chain attack now If you don't know what that is it is the future of cyber cartels and hacking to put into perspective Okay, this is the software that big companies like Nvidia like Intel Okay, imagine you're probably sitting on here with a processor in your computer from Intel or you're sitting here with a graphic card from Nvidia These are the big multi-billion dollar companies that have been threatened by this software because this is running massive IT stacks in their entire company. So really trying to figure out how much they got attacked, where they got attacked is still being sort of discovered. But to let you know, the scope is quite large. We're not getting attacked, but we might as well be if the companies that we are using the products of are actually being attacked wholesale with this. So how did SolarWinds get attacked? Well, basically this is something that we call a supply chain attack. If you don't know what a supply chain attack is, this is something that dates all the way back to hacks like Stuxnet, all the way back in 2010. A supply chain attack is the best form of attack. It is it is difficult. It can it can it can it can be sort of a complicated form, but what it aims to do is attack software in the middle of its supply chain, whether that be development, whether that be research, whatever is typically the least secure 
element in that entire supply chain is what an attacker or a hacker will go for. So in the case of SolarWinds, what had effectively happened was they snuck in a compromised DLL file, which is a dynamic link library. It's a small file. So to give you guys a quick example of what's going on, this is the game directory file for Death Stranding. Now DS is the application that we click on to launch the game. However, since you see all these DLLs above and below, these are actually called on runtime by Death Stranding. Now to show you, if this was a supply chain attack, right, and let's say anything was infected, any one of these DLL files could basically be the exact DLL file we need just with a malware introduced. And since it's called on runtime, you can kind of figure out how dangerous things could end up getting. Basically, this was snuck into the entire program as part of a, a, a release that went out to these companies that were attacked in effect, right? So this, this little file creates a backdoor, all right, that would be utilized. And so it was snuck in the supply chain and without anybody really knowing until it got really buried into a lot of people's computers, this virus was just laying there dormant to be attacked. Now, Microsoft, all right, may not be the most, you know, fucking artistic organizations out there, but they're very good at creating, or at least relaying all this information out. So they created this graph that shows you exactly what the fuck happened. I'm going to decipher it for you. Now, what you see before here might look like some fucking weird, shady, like, money laundering operation from a fucking drug cartel, and it might honestly as well be. What you have here is solarwinds.orion.core.businesslayer.dll. This is is the compromised file tossed in the fucking supply chain. So they threw this file in here. Now this is the program that necessarily wasn't compromised, but it loads the DLL file as it's being used, right? So solarwinds.business, dot layer host dot exe was called upon by some unsuspecting IT person it called onto this compromised file which then activates the backdoor the backdoor then inspects the environment that it's in to truly understand the scope of where it's sitting in and what it's doing it then gathers the info then it hits an initial c2 server which is the command and control server then it relays and sends information to this second command and control server which then connects this actual backdoor virus that's been put in with an hacker that's just sitting there injecting all these hacks from their actual keyboard. So it goes through this complicated looking procedure into effectively creating a very robust backdoor. Now this backdoor is, you have to understand the scope. Apparently 16 to 20,000 customers were hit. That means high profile motherfuckers are hit with this shit wholesale. Now this hack didn't trigger in 20,000 different places. No, 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 no. The reason why this is nation state is they let this hack sit since March. This is something that happened in March. So as people were getting this program to their systems, they were embedding it, they were doing whatever they could. The hackers sat there dormant. They waited to figure out what fucking servers were the real keystones. They sat there waiting, and then one after one after one after one, they started hitting them fucking all like it's Christmas. The sum of these key targets include FireEye, which is the company that pretty much fucking brought this shit to light, the U.S. Department of the Treasury, the U.S. National Telecommunications and Information Administration, the U.S. Department of State, the National Institute of Health, which is, I believe, yeah, in the United States, the Department of Homeland Security, Department of Energy, yeah, these are some fucking power grid seeking motherfuckers. U.S. National Nuclear Security Administration. As far as I know, these dudes are sitting behind the nuclear weapons. Some U.S. states, not, not all detailed. Then you've got Microsoft being hit, who also are working against this virus, and Cisco as well. So these are just some attacks that they have. A group known as Red Drip Team, which I believe is a cybersecurity team out of like China or something in this case, is a team that basically details what servers were getting hit. So I'm going to show you this text file that was released on GitHub, right? Now this text file, it might look like fucking jargon, but I'll try to describe what happens. Basically what these people were doing was they were trying to uncover the subnet systems that this whole like virus was relaying information to and exactly what it hit. So these are effectively a list of targets that they were able to identify. So I'm going to show you right here. They've got avsvmccloud.com. Then they've got the region of the actual area. They've got appsync.api. This as far as I know is very, this is all similar, right? What's really important are these string of characters in the beginning. This looks like some deep web onion address shit, but really it's just locations for these different servers they're hitting. So again, if you look closely on the right, this is what people have been identifying as, right? So you've got AMR Corp Intel, 
All right, and if you type in Control F and just fucking go to NVIDIA, you can even see that they've been hit in this case too. At least 80% of them have been just from the United States alone, which shows you that it's another sign of a nation state attack. It's specifically targeting one of the biggest nations in the world in what appears to be one of the biggest fucking cyber attacks ever perceived by mankind, let alone 2020. Now, the avsvmccloud.com is actually the command and control server that's been actually hit right there this server has actually been seized right now and now it redirects basically all of these are now redirecting to microsoft and to give you some proof of that i'm going to show you something real quick install dns util so i'm going to show you guys something real cool about what happened with this command and control we're actually going to figure out who fucking owns it i'm going to show you direct proof right now that's how you do it so if you're on linux or you're on windows you're going to need something called ns lookup so if you're on like linux you're going to you're going to install a package called dns utils and in this case we're going to do ns lookup all right and we're going to go look up this uh server so let me just go back to the red drip team uh, real quick, and we're going to take this avsvmccloud.com. So we're figuring out where this goes to. So avsvmccloud or vmcloud.com. And if we hit enter, you can see that it's resolving to an answer at 21401. So let's figure out who the fuck this actually is. So let's do a quick who is search of this. Who is, uh, and we do 2140. Uh, oh, one. We can actually see that whoever owns this, yes, it actually legitimately belongs to Microsoft. And if you go down further, right, you can see that to report suspected security issues specific to traffic emanating from Microsoft on services, blah, 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 so this is Microsoft dropping it right here. And here they've specifically told you to like fucking mention security vulnerabilities, legal law enforcement related requests, blah, 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 blah. It literally boosts right back to them. So Microsoft knows it's there. They have hijacked and secured it. This is is all what they are okay this is where it is dude this is what it's gotten to ladies and gents microsoft hijacked you saw it right here <laughs> Now, the reason it came back the same is because we're obviously looking at a subnet. We're looking at these related fucking, you know, uh, targets. And what Microsoft and, and FireEye and even GoDaddy, they all collaborated to basically implement a kill switch. So now anything that is any anything that has been affected now or any modern affections that will actually happen, right, will be dealt with through Microsoft and their fucking kill switches. So this is actually quite interesting to cover. Microsoft, everyone worked their ass off to deal with this as much as they could. However, this kill switch only affects the only affects like what they have already identified it doesn't include let's say the hackers behind all this may have implemented other intrusions other actual like you know you know taps into a network so to speak so that's still to be identified this kill switch only affects what we ever fucking know so in reality it could do it, it could literally stop the entire thing or it could actually do fucking nothing at all worth worth a damn so really as time moves on and the, and the real the meat of this attack is figured out i mean literally at this point over 40 fucking victims have been identified we're gonna have to realize how bad this really is and whether it's still ongoing like to understand this is a monumental hack all right i wouldn't be making this video if it fucking wasn't i hope no matter what throughout this entire affair you have realized how the monumental scope of what the fuck we're looking at now ladies and gentlemen to tell you how fucking bad this ended up going the stock price for solar winds all right the company behind the software literally dropped like 25 fucking percent of course they rebounded and i probably should have bought on a dip or something but they rebounded they're back in they're back in play or at least they're going to come back the actual damage of this is, is massive all right like the company is is kind of getting hit, hit with everything and there's a lot of reports of people who are apparently selling their fucking stock before this somehow happened so maybe there might have been some insider fucking knowledge now who did this okay to understand before we go into this the scope of such an attack listen ladies and gentlemen right now people are still trying to gather what they're going to be doing maybe for weeks if not months there's going to be multiple cybersecurity teams that are going to try to figure out how bad this attack even is around the clock we'll be working this this is the nature of this kind of bullshit to understand how bad and how wide this attack would have been gotten. And, and to, to also understand, we still need to know if this attack is, is still even functioning, right? Because even though that servers have been seized, you never know how bad it really is. You never know if there's at least one more trick up the fucking sleeve. Now, what could this mean, right? Now, you have to understand, right? Businesses have been hacked. That could also mean that user data might have been breached into. Something must have been leaked out. That still has to be assessed, right? This is all speculation for a bit. 
Now, if you look at government agencies, if you have identification of these government agencies, which a lot of you in the United States will definitely do, we don't even know if that's fucking compromised. There's no idea about what, how, how bad the compromised data really is, whether data was even compromised, whether it wasn't, whether, were they, whether they were going for something even further, whether they were going for like state secrets or some shit, right? Like if a nuclear missile like branch of the United States is hacked, I mean, all, all bets are off really in this case. Now, there's a lot of assumptions as to who did this, and I'm not going to ride into that. I just wanted to talk about a big virus attack. I didn't want to jump into the fucking conspiracy theories, but I will address that really quickly. A lot of people believe this is the work of the Russian intelligence agencies out there. And because this is a nation state attack, uh, there's nobody out there that can easily deny that that could be a possibility. Of course, Russia says they didn't do it, and... What the fuck did you expect them to say? Well, you got us. We did it. <laughs> Lol. No, they were obviously going to say, we did not do it, friends. No, no, no. Russia not involved. And there's probably a chance that they might not have been fucking involved. No one's making a hard claim and neither should they. That feeds into fucking conspiracy theories. Now, if it isn't Russia, then it could easily be any other country that the United States isn't on the fucking friendliest terms with. And... That includes a pretty big fucking list, let's be real. But beyond that, it may not even be necessarily a nation state. It could actually be an entirely different organization. Who the fuck knows? Because in reality, as this attack has happened, it has been a week. And still, many experts in the entire community are calling it one of the biggest attacks, period. And that includes trying to understand, again, the scope of it. Because it's quite large. If I had to equate what the fuck just happened, think about this. Basically, a fucking nuclear weapon had dropped on to the cybersecurity community and the world of internet security as well, too, especially regarding the higher level companies that we all work with and the services that we all use. Because, ladies and gentlemen, data security cannot be taken seriously enough. If it's anything that I could say, I know I make a big hoopla about keeping your data safe, but in this case, you could use like 15 fucking virtual machines, like the most secure version of Linux, Windows, or Mac, or fucking any Fisher Price OS that exists. You could, you could, you could use like any password manager or VPN, but there's nothing you could have done to prevent this. Okay. Now let's assume your data is part of a lot of these companies, which there are a lot of companies that are hit and a lot of them operate with a lot of services to, to users like me and you, who knows how much of our data got fucked? Who knows how much of their data got fucked? Because right now we're still trying to unravel the massive scope of everything that has happened. But ladies and gentlemen, what has actually happened is one of the biggest cyber attacks in the fucking world. Now, I know that I always tell you to keep your data safe because data is the most valuable thing that we have. And without a doubt, this attack proves it. There has been no more sophisticated cyber attack than what we have just seen in the last week. And it was all centered around data from you, me, massive government agencies, and whatnot. And if it's anything to learn from all of this, is to handle security safe. You can't even trust the services that are above you. You, you. A lot of people like to think that these are impenetrable, safe services out there. But sometimes the easiest way to attack them is literally sitting right in front. And it's literally attacking them at their IT level with a fucking supply chain attack back in March that was sitting dormant until literally the last several months when it was going bang, 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 target after target after target being hacked. And literally until now, massive companies figured it out. So again, really trying to figure out how much got stolen, what happened, it's still, you know, uncovering. And maybe I might recover this and revisit this months down the line when we have a more clear video of how, or a clear picture of how bad we got screwed. But right now, I would say... The actual meat and potatoes of seeing how bad this attack was definitely rustles my goddamn jimmies. And ladies and gentlemen, not to fear monger or anything, but I just wanted to educate and tell you about something I personally thought was really fucking cool. So ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar, and if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I am.